everyone. My name is uh, Sue Scheib Giles, and I'm one of the adult services uh, librarians here at Bexley. And um, I want to um, welcome you to our fourth part uh, Protect and Improve Your Memory series. It's going to take place um, each Wednesday in February at 1 p.m. Um, this is the overview program. And then um, next February on the 9th, we're going to have a nutrition is going to be the topic. And then on the 16th, it will be medication. And the last program on February 23rd uh, will be exercise. Um, I did put some small flyers in the back with our program guides that lists um, all four of the programs. You can register um, on our website or give us a call and we can help you register. Um, and you, it, this is a hybrid program. So there are people on Zoom online watching as well. We're going to uh, tape this program and then we are going to upload each of the um, presentations on our Bexley Library uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, this is our speaker, Jenny Lobb. She is a family and consumer sciences educator for OSU Extension in Franklin County. She's had some other programs here, so you might recognize her. Uh, she holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and a master's in public health. They're both from OSU. Uh, Jenny is also a registered and licensed dietitian in the state of Ohio. As an extension educator, uh, Jenny specializes in food, nutrition, and wellness. So I would like to introduce you to Jenny Law and to our four part series, Protect and Improve Your Memory. If you do have any questions during the program, just uh, raise your hand and I can bring the mic over uh, so that uh, the people online can hear your question. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Sue, for that introduction. And thank you all for coming. We weren't really sure what today was going to um, look like with the weather. So thank you all for coming out or joining online. Um, and actually, this is the first time I've ever taught this program. So um, I wasn't sure how many people would be interested anyway. And we were thrilled that there is such interest. So um, this program comes from Texas A&M Extension. Um, so I do want to give credit to the author. Um, and I'll probably stay um, up front um, behind the podium for most of this so I can reference the notes just because it is the first time teaching. Um, but it is pretty interactive. There'll be some activities. Um, and so um, I do encourage you to participate as you're comfortable. And, and for some of the activities, um, rather than passing around the mic, if it's not a question, if it's just, you know, a show of hands, I can repeat those so that those joining us online can um, participate as well. So this is a four part series, as um, Sue mentioned, and this is the overview section where we'll talk about um, your memory, just understanding it a little bit better and how we can protect and improve it and also how it does change throughout life. Um, and one of the things you'll hear me say over and over again is that your memory is only as good as the information you take in. You can't remember something that you didn't learn in the first place. So we'll talk more about that today. We'll talk about learning styles and how we do take in information and process it so that we can recall it later. Um, and I also want you to know that memory lapses happen to all of us. They happen to people of any age. So even though we sometimes hear these terms like, you know, you're seeing you, you having a senior moment, that's really a misnomer because we all have memory lapses. I know forgetting where um, I put my keys or you know, my husband puts his keys is a common occurrence in my household. We've all had that experience where we're scrambling to find something and we just can't remember where it is. And um, stress impacts our memory. 
So when you're under stress, um, that can impact your ability to recall information. And it, it happens to all of us um, at various points in life. Um, but remember, you, you, can't, um, <laughs> you can't remember something if you didn't take it in in the first place. And that has a lot to do with those moments. You know, if you, if you um, didn't store the information where you put your keys, you're not going to be able to recall it, especially under stress. Um, and there's a huge, huge difference between forgetting where you put your keys and forgetting how to use them. So that's, that's kind of what this program is all about. You know, we want to remember that that type of intelligence, um, which we'll talk about in a minute, that how we have accumulated over a lifetime, protected that sort of memory, um, and know that these memory lapses, um, those little moments um, happen to all of us for various reasons. And there are things that you can do to adjust to memory change. And we'll talk more about those in the future sessions, um, specifically eating healthy, fueling your brain with good nutrition, um, preventing chronic conditions. Well, we will talk about um, in that fourth session, it's, it's not just about exercise. We will talk about exercise some, um, but it's more about um, some chronic conditions that can impact memory and how an overall healthy lifestyle can help um, protect your memory. Um, and then we will also talk about medications um, and how those can impact memory as well. So today we'll talk about how memory works. And I alluded to this a little bit already, um, but there are two um, main types of intelligence um, defined here on this slide. The first is crystallized. So crystallized intelligence, um, you think of a crystal, it's solidified, it's hard, it's solid. Um, it's accumulate, accumulated knowledge um, on which a person can draw to make decisions. Um, and it includes things like your vocabulary, your judgment, um, your wisdom, your experience. Um, whereas fluid intelligence, um, the other type of intelligence defined here, refers to the speed and accuracy of information processing, how quickly something can be learned and recalled. So your crystallized intelligence, um, remember if you en envision a crystal, it's, it's solidified, um, that stays pretty solid, pretty constant over the lifetime. Um, however, your fluid intelligence does tend to decline. It may take longer to recall information. It's not that you've lost information, but the speed of processing um, does tend to decline. Um, and that has to do in part with just the sheer amount of information that has been crystallized. If, if you know, it's harder to get to something, to recall something, it just takes longer to do so. It's not that the information is not there. So how does memory work? Well, we take in information um, in a few different, um, few different periods of, of time, meaning sensory memory um, is all these momentary sensations and impressions that we encounter. And we really, um, don't do a whole lot with that. It would be overwhelming and our brains would be exhausted after just a few minutes if we processed um, and stored all the sensory information that we were taking in. Um, these are things, you know, that you take in with your senses, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, what you see. Um, sometimes we do act upon that information. For example, if you're cold um, or you're hungry, you might store that information at least temporarily and, and act upon it. Um, but most of that we just encounter and move on. Short-term information you're probably familiar with. It's you know, something that you remember for several seconds or minutes, um, and then you let go of once you've done something with it. So maybe that's um, remembering a phone number or an address until you have um, written it down or looked it up um, and, and then you can't recall that um, any longer. And long-term information is, is information that can last forever. It's, 
information that your brain has stored and used, perhaps because you use it regularly. Um, and again, this, uh, this contributes to that crystallized intelligence. It's, it's there, it accumulates over a lifetime um, and it can, um, it can be uh, perhaps harder to recall. You, you may have had the experience where you're trying to think of a word and it just feels like it's on the tip of your tongue and um, it's there, you have that intelligence. It just takes longer to recall um, because you're not using it um, regularly or, or daily or perhaps right in the moment when you need it. So that's, that's how, um, those are those types of memory. Um, and we encounter and process this information through our different learning styles. And in general, there are um, three types of learners. Most of us are probably a mix of these three, but we tend to be stronger in one style than another. So auditory learners hear information, visual learners see information, kinesthetic um, needs to feel or touch or work with the information. Um, and maybe you already know what type of learner you are. We're going to do a couple of exercises um, to help you determine if you're not sure or maybe confirm if you think you already know. So the first is finish this sentence. Whenever you buy something new that needs to be put together, would you read the instructions before starting? Would you read them aloud or have someone read them to you as you're going along? Or would you leave the directions in the box and begin assembling? So how many of you, you can just raise your hand, would you, would you read the instructions? Yeah, we're, we're the visual learners. I'm a visual learner. We like to read the instructions. Anyone like to read them aloud or, have, or listen to someone read them? If so, you're an auditory learner. Anyone a meddler? You just jump right in and get going? I, I see some giggling when no one wants to admit that you're not going to look at the directions. If someone online, okay. So yeah, so if you just like the jump right in, then you're a kinesthetic learner. So auditory learners, um, if you're an auditory learner, hearing is the primary way that you like to learn new information. Um, it may lead to conversation or you learn through conversation with others. You like discussing things. Um, you may learn song lyrics easily. Um, you, you wouldn't like writing as much. Um, and you may struggle a little bit more to read body language. Um, so we all have you know, strengths and, and weaknesses associated with our learning styles. But here's the question. Could an auditory learner's memory be affected by not wearing a hearing aid? What do you think? Yeah, I see, I see heads nodding. How so? Right, so if you're, if you're not hearing the information, you don't learn it and then you can't recall it later on. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk in much more detail in a later session about how different physical and even emotional conditions can impact our memory. But here's a very you know, simple example of you're an auditory learner and you have hearing problems that could impact your memory because you're not taking in the information in the first place. All right, so if you are a visual learner and we have many visual learners in the room, um, seeing is the primary way you like to learn new information. You may watch the faces of those who are talking to you. Um, you may need to write down directions to follow them. And you know, there's something to be said, especially for, um, those of us visual learners, you know, if writing down things, taking notes, it helps with, with memory, you know, even if, even if it's something that um, is already printed in a book or if it's something that you're um, reading on the internet, just taking your own notes helps, helps with memory as we're seeing and processing what we're learning. Um, we may understand body language more easily um, though we may have trouble remembering names, we may, you know, be better at recognizing faces, um, but struggle with 
remembering names. And these are generalizations, so it's not going to be true of everybody, but just some characteristics perhaps associated with that learning style. Um, and so similarly, could a visual learner's memory be affected by not wearing glasses? Yes, so same, same idea there. If you are a visual learner and you have problems with your eyesight, that could very well impact your memory because you're not taking in the information um, presented to you. All right, another little activity here to distinguish between auditory and visual learning styles. So I'll give you a minute to look at this sentence um, and, and identify how many times the letter F appears in the sentence. Finished files are the result of years of scientific study combined with the experience of years. How many? I see two, five, six, it is six, yeah. Um, and I counted myself just now and I only counted four, <laughs> but it is six. And the reason you may not have got um, all six is that um, the letter, if you're an auditory learner, you hear the F as a V in a couple of those words. Um, so you don't see it for what it is. You're paying attention to the sound that it makes. So kinesthetic learner, we haven't talked about this one yet, is, is when doing is the primary way of learning new information. Kinesthetic learners like to touch and feel things. Um, they have trouble sitting or standing still. They like to be moving, fiddling. Um, they need to experience something hands-on to best learn how to do it. Um, and so could a kinesthetic learner's memory be affected by changes in mobility? Absolutely. Another little activity. So this, this is supposed to be a comparison of all three of those learning styles. How many states in the United States begin with the letter M? Any guesses? Five? It is eight. So Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, and Montana. So the question to think about is how you counted them. Um, some people, if you are um, an auditory learner, maybe you were going through them in your head, maybe singing the song you learned in elementary school, um, trying to count them. Um, if you are um, a kinesthetic learner, maybe you were um, it's the notes say trying to reach out and grab them. So, you know, having more of that spatial or geographic view and visual, maybe you were just looking, you know, looking at the map and trying to identify um, states and, and what letter they start with um, or alphabetizing them. Um, but we have different ways, perhaps, that we approach this question, depending on our, our learning style, how we took the information in and how we best recall. So if you're having trouble with memory, there are many things um, that could contribute to your ability or inability to recall information. Um, and as I said, our future lessons will dive into these in a little um, little more depth, um, but some of them may be drugs or alcohol, um, prescription or um, non-prescription. It doesn't necessarily mean um, drug and alcohol abuse. Um, some of our, some of, or though it could, but, but some of the, the medications we take do have side effects that can impact memory. And so we'll talk more about that. Um, emotion. I already mentioned how stress can impact our brain, um, but grief, depression, loneliness, there are other emotional conditions that impact our ability to recall information too. Um, improper nutrition certainly can um, impact memory. We'll talk next week about how um, important it is to fuel our brain um, in just a little preview on that is, is the brain um, 
the brain only accounts for about 2% of our body weight, but it, it consumes about 30% of our energy. So, so important to fuel our brain with good nutrition. Um, and then lack of sleep. Just think about how you feel when you don't get a good night's sleep, maybe more foggy, um, irritable. And so that can certainly impact memory as well. So if you're wanting to improve your memory, the best type of learner blends those different types of learning to maximize performance. And you can also exercise your brain to improve memory, just like you might exercise your body to improve strength or endurance. What are some ways that you might exercise your brain? What, what comes to mind when you hear that? Crossword puzzles, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a, a jigsaw puzzle, any, any sort of those puzzles or mind games, whether it be a crossword or a word search. There are different sorts of brain teasers, things like Sudokus. Um, yeah, those, those sort of mind games. Um, trying new or different learning methods. So maybe it's trying an online course, trying something you haven't, haven't done before. Um, having conversation with others. So there's this term in child development called scaffolding, but I think it applies to all of us when we're, when we're around other people. We're always learning from others when we're engaging in conversation and they, other people challenge us um, to think beyond what we would on our own. So um, engaging with other people, learning a new skill through continuing education, lots of ways you can exercise your mind. There's no one white, right way, it's whatever works best for you. And there are also some strategies you could employ to improve your memory. And we'll look at each of these strategies um, in the remainder of our time today. So things like concentration, association, repetition, and then relaxation. So concentration is just giving something your uh, attention. You know, it's making it a priority and giving it your mental effort at that point in time. Um, for example, if you tried to add the following numbers while reciting the months of the year, probably wouldn't get very far. Um, and doing either one of those things um, on its own would be reasonable. You know, you can either do the math or you can recite a list, um, but you can't divide your attention between the two and do them correctly. So giving something your attention um, can help with memory. Association is using things like visual elaboration or links or cues um, to try to to help associate a piece of information you want to remember with some sort of, um, you know, visual or link. Um, so a couple of examples of this um, could be something like the Turner Medical Clinic. You could use an association like Turner turned my health around to remember the name of that hospital. Um, another one um, provided as an example is um, Rose Campbell's name. So in this example, Rose has red hair. Campbell's soup comes in a red can. So that's an association to remember um, the name of Rose Campbell. Um, and then similarly, the one here, your white-haired neighbor, Marsha. Does anyone have an um, thought as to what the association might be in this example? Marshmallow, yeah. So thinking of a marshmallow to remember the name Marsha. Um, and it does say in the notes, you just have to be careful then not to call her marshmallow, uh, <laughs> but using that association to remember the name. So um, there are lots of, um, lots of examples of association. It's whatever is gonna make sense in your mind. You know, there might be an, a string of numbers that's meaningful to you that may not have any meaning to another person, but you could use, you know, certain, certain numbers to associate um, and remember things. 
Repetition is also helpful. So um, how many in the room are list makers? Yeah, I see, I see some hands. So list, making a list is um, writing, repeating through writing. Um, and that's a way to remember. You then also have the visual cue if you're carrying the list with you. Um, but even something like writing, you know, writing the, the dates of these classes on your calendar, that's a strategy to help you remember when, when the classes are. Um, or um, even if you have, you know, the print, print version of it, that's a visual cue as well. That's, a, that's an additional reminder, but the act of rewriting them um, can be an additional strategy, especially for visual learners. Um, taking notes, I, I talked a little bit about, and rehearsing, wh whether it's rewriting or just running through things in your mind. So if you think about, if you've ever had to memorize something, you've probably done that rehearsal, whether it was mental rehearsal or out loud. And that's a strategy for, um, for remembering what you need to remember, whether it's short term or whether it's something that you want to be able to recall for a long, long time. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll repeat it for, for those online. The question is, is, have we lost something by making a list through an app um, versus writing it out? Um, I would say making a list through an app is still a strategy to um, improve memory. You know, you're still, you're still making a list. Um, you're still doing more rehearsal than you would otherwise. Um, depending on your learning style, there may be additional benefit to, um, to that muscle memory, as you said, to the physical act of, of writing it out. I don't know if it's significant, um, but yes, some people may benefit more from the actual writing, um, although you, I use you know apps to make lists myself, a shopping list, and it's certainly more helpful than going to the store and relying on, you know, um, what I saw I needed in my pantry had I not made a list. So yeah, good question. So a couple examples of repetition, um, finish the following lines. I'm sure these should be pretty familiar. So amazing grace, how sweet the sound. So that's a song that is, probably repeated um, often through through your lifetime, or at least you've heard before. Over, over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail. Um, and plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. So that one's an ad. And it's funny, you know, we do repetition just by um, being exposed to media online, on TV. Um, and, and marketers know that repetition is a effective strategy. We remember those slogans, whether we want to or not. Um, so those are a few examples of repetition. And then relaxation, it's not so much a strategy for recall in and of itself, um, though it is a technique um, that can facilitate other strategies. So as I mentioned, um, it's hard to recall information when you're under stress. So um, having relaxation strategies, whether it's just taking a deep breath, you know, pausing and taking a breath, um, whatever you can do. Um, if you have a little bit more time to wind down, um, you'll be able to recall information better than uh, when you're in the moment under pressure, trying to figure out where that item was or um, trying to recall that information. So that, that kind of wraps up our overview. Um, as, as I, you know, I've said multiple times, our subsequent sessions will address um, some of those other aspects of recall and the factors that impact memory in more detail. Um, but any questions you would like to ask today?
What about reading? Because, you know, we work at the library and people come in and they have their lists of books and they do a lot of reading. Is that the same thing like doing puzzles? And Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reading absolutely can help uh, keep your your memory sharp, be a form of mental exercise. Sure. Yeah. So the question is, is trying to do something faster, a strategy, um, meaning that it's not helpful if, if you need to know something in the moment. It's really not helpful if you remember it a couple hours later. Um, I don't know that I have a clear answer for that. I, I don't know that. I mean, you can try. You can certainly try. I don't know that there's a lot of um, evidence suggesting that just trying to recall something fast is going to help you in that moment. Um, and I, I absolutely, you know, understand the frustration there where, you know, it's like, oh, oh, well, I can, you know, I can try to relax and recall information, but if I don't have it now, it's, it's not helpful. Um, I think part of it is just understanding how how memory works. And, you know, yes, it's still frustrating when something's right there on the tip of your tongue and you can't recall it. But understanding that um, that's not uncommon. Um, it's it's just the way our memory works as we have more and more crystallized knowledge in our our recall, our processing um, does take longer um, with that accumulated knowledge. One thing I wondered is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, if you um, if you can't find something, mm -hmm. sometimes I find if I just try to maybe like think the last time I had it and then keep trying to retrace steps or, mm -hmm. you know, what did I do after, you know, like if I come in and like with my car keys, if I don't put them in a certain little cup, if I hold them, I do something else and I lay them down that I'm searching for them. But I just, I found that that is what I have to do. I mean, everybody has their own strategies. But. Yeah, retracing steps, you know, using that visualization, especially for a visual learner mm -hmm. could be a helpful strategy. And, you know, really it's, um, you know, it's it comes back to that question of, did you, did you store the information in the first place? So, you know, retracing steps may help, um, if you kind of know your patterns and routines or can think back through where you you've been, if, if it's kind of, if you identify in your own routine, some um, common instances where you're stumbling, then maybe having those, maybe intentionally um, taking in that information in the first place or setting up a place um, where you, you know, I come in the house and I put this here um, that could be a more proactive strategy to help um, help prevent those problems in the future. And I have I did have another another thought related to the speed. So, um, you know, trying to recall things quickly in the moment may not do anything. But in regard to exercising your mind, um, speed could be a strategy you you use when you're doing that mental exercise to help improve the speed of recall then when you do need to recall in the moment. And that that's, you know, that's, that's true in other um, regards. You know, we have to challenge ourselves. If you like crossword puzzles, for example, but you do the same puzzles over and over again, um, they're less challenging over time. So whether you're challenging yourself through speed or through doing something different, doing that mental exercise, the goal of it is to sharpen, um, not just become you know, complacent or be doing it for, for solely the entertainment purpose. Yeah. Do you think our reliance on the internet has led to a decrease in our memories? I mean, my husband and I can't watch TV for a night without Googling mm -hmm. what actress was in what other movie, or I have friends who use their GPS to go downtown. I mean, they're 70 years old. We've lived here our whole lives. You know how to get to the PNC bank on Broad Street, but you just, everybody just relies on their devices to assist them. Yeah, I do think there's something to be said for for that. And I don't necessarily have the 
research to substantiate that, but I mean, those examples you provided are make sense. Uh, and as does, you know, we don't have to memorize phone numbers or addresses often anymore. We can just look them up. Um, we don't have to punch in the number. We just hit someone's name. And, and um, so we never have to process that information in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I will hang around. Um, but thank you all for coming, um, for braving the weather. And I do hope you'll come back for a future session if this was interesting today. And stay safe out there. Mm -hmm.